Hi, I'm Brad. Today I've got a video update on the Subaru B4 Liberty Twin Turbo. Now, this car was sold in Australia from 2001 to 2003. It was the only car sold in Australia with the twin turbo setup, and of course, it was the um, only model in that year range that was sold with that. Now, there are Japanese models prior to that um, the B4 um, RSK the JDM models and things like that, which there are a few around the world in different markets and there's a few private imports in Australia. But what we're going to talk about in the next couple of minutes is how the turbo system works, the way the intercooler works and why this car is such a fantastic road car as a touring car and with its twin turbo setup, if it's tuned and modified correctly, just makes the car even more fun to drive. But at the same time, what you can look for if you're looking at buying one of these, because we're talking about a car that's now well and truly 10 years old, they are sometimes a bit of a nightmare if you don't know what you're doing as far as the way the boost control works. Um, there's all these solenoids and vacuum lines and boost hoses. In fact, underneath the front here, there's a hose that goes around to the left-hand inner guard, which has got a, another part of the boost control system a lot of people don't even know exists. Some of these cars have frontal impact accidents, get repaired by panel shops, and then all of a sudden the boost control system doesn't work properly and they don't know why. So what we've got here in front of us is a car that we're repairing the twin turbo setup and I want to comment on the fact that some people opt for a single turbo modification which you can do with some um, lengthy um, specialist parts but you take away the fantastic bottom end performance and mid-range drivability that this car has factory standard but at the same time um, if you have the car working properly with the right parts it's still a really good fun car to drive as long as you modify it correctly. So let's just talk about the way the system works to start with and then we can touch on some of the performance improvements. So what we've got here is the original factory turbo with the integral wastegate on the exhaust side. Um, it's a tiny turbo because they're twin turbo setup, they're staged. So the primary turbo comes on boost first and then the secondary turbo, which is this one that sits on the other side of the engine, then activates and kicks in around 4,500 RPM. Now you'll notice this one doesn't have an integral wastegate, but it's got a valve in the inlet, in the exhaust manifold, where the energy comes up out of the exhaust manifold to drive the turbo when this diaphragm opens it. Now this diaphragm is then controlled by the um, solenoid and the pneumatic control system, which is activated via the factory ECU. And also in combination with that opening, you also have on the boost side, the pressure side, the two inlets to the intercooler, which then feed the inlet manifold. So you've got to remember that's mounted upside down in the engine like that. So you have the actuated secondary turbo feed on that one and the primary turbo on that one. And as you can see, these are just some of the boost control and, and um, actuator lines that are critical in the way the engine works. So let's have a look at, in the engine bay to see how things fit because like all Subaru EJ series engines, you've got a single throttle body here with the uh, intercooler sitting here and the single um, comes out of the intercooler and fits in there. But down here, you can see the driver's side exhaust manifold, which is a secondary turbo and the passenger side um, primary turbo, which is the up pipe that that one bolts onto. So of course, this is the side that's got the integral wastegate and this is the side that doesn't. So effectively what happens is this turbo comes on boost first and starts getting to peak RPM um, because there's only so much it can flow because it's a very small turbo. And then the whole system says, okay, let's change over and add the second turbo at the same time. You go through what some people call the VOD or the valley of death. So in the mid range around four to four and a half thousand RPM, as the cycle changes over, you have this big hiccup or dead spot as the system charges itself to bring on this one earlier. Now, one of the things that this particular model can be improved is if you put the right modified parts, but first and foremost, if you get the factory ECU tuned to make it run a lot better, and you can't eliminate the uh, mid-range dip, but you can dramatically improve it. Now, one thing that I do want to comment on, and I can remember when these cars first went on sale here in Australia back in 2001, and that is these engines originally coming from the car being derived out of Japan were primarily tuned for 100 octane fuel. So if you've got a factory standard Subaru B4 delivered in Australia as an original factory car, some of the cars even still to this day have um, excessive ignition control and ping because 
when the tune was readjusted here in Australia, um, Super Australia was still very generous with their um, expectations from the Australian fuel. Probably these days, maybe a little bit better, a little bit worse, but factory standard, they still pinged, and over a period of time and age and kilometres, they do a lot of bottom end damage to the uh, big end bearings, not due to oil problems, but due to excessive amounts of ignition. So even if you've got a factory standard car, and even if you don't want to do any modifications, and even if you're not worried about the mid-range valley of death, I highly encourage you to get a good, reliable, custom tune done on the car, purely to make the engine a lot more reliable. Now beyond that, a custom tune will deliver more performance, it'll deliver you a lot more fun car to drive. If the tuner has not got knowledge with experience on this car, you can reduce the valley of death. Um, and of course, I get my, my cameraman to come back down. These are the critical components of the way the boost control system runs is to get these turbos to come on boost as early as possible to make them work properly and make sure that you've got at the end of the day a reliable fun car to drive. Beyond that, you can put a modified exhaust system on it. You don't want three inch downpipes off the sides of these two turbos because they are too big. There is a custom kit that we designed many years ago which works really well. And of course, being a touring type car, just because it's twin turbo doesn't mean it's a rocket ship, but they are a very fun car to drive and also at the same time, like I said in the beginning of the video, you can make them very reliable as well. So there you have it, Subaru B4 twin turbo here in Australia. Check the fuel that you're running on it. Make sure you're always running on 98 octane fuel. Have a think about the modifications you're choosing. If you're buying a second hand one or you've owned one for some time, check out our further comments on this channel. Share it. Uh, make sure you subscribe to this channel for future updates and go to our website on the uh, drop down menu. You can put in Subaru 2001 in the year and then choose Liberty and then choose B4. It'll give you a massive list of components from suspension improvements, sway bars, shocks, brakes, all that kind of stuff. But of course, we can then give you more information on the power kit info and the way we can tune and modify the car. But for now, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter and Instagram. Send us a message and um, hope to speak to you again soon. My name is Brett Middleton. Bye for now.